Hello strategy fans and welcome back to a first look at yet another game by Slytherin Games. Um, Slytherin is probably one of my favorite strategy gaming companies next to Game Labs and Paradox Interactive. Uh, these guys come out with the coolest, most interesting sort of games. It almost brings you back to a board game scenario for those of you that never got the opportunity to play with miniatures. And in this case we are looking at Pike and Shot. Um, really it is basically um, centered around the time of the Thirty Years War as well as the English Civil War. Um, uh, the wars of religion between the Catholics and the Protestants. Um, we're going to go ahead here and I'm going to show you what's going on. Um, as this is a first look, a lot of you are probably wondering, where's the campaign? Well, this game doesn't have a campaign per se. Actually, what happens if you ha is you have pre-constructed scenarios. Now, for instance, if we look at the Thirty Years' War, we go ahead and select it. Um, we can see here on the right a description of the war itself. Um, once we actually press select, we get a nice little menu of different battles that we can select. And we don't have to do these battles in order. Um, you could play the battles however you want. Now, you can't play these battles on one side from this particular, I mean, on, from both sides on this particular menu, but if you play a skirmish battle online, you could play either side. Um, so you could really, at any point, and as you could see, just give you an idea of how many battles there are in just this scenario um, of the Thirty Years' War. And these battles take a long time, guys. These are not short battles. These are not easy battles. Uh, this is just the Thirty Years' War, and we're still not finished. There we go. Uh, battle of Rokra. Rokra was the end of the Thirty Years' War. Um, we're going to go ahead here, and I'm just going to show you guys uh, what to expect in terms of actual visuals in this game. Uh, because it is a lot more like a miniature board game than anything else. Um, so it sort of gives you a pre-battle scenario. The frontline enemy foot battalions are in the old-fashioned deep terracio formation. This is inefficient in terms of firepower, but very resilient. Um, and you can basically read all of these things here um, that's going to assist you in, in winning the battle. Let's go ahead and proceed. Now the first thing I want to do is show you the zoom-in capabilities here. Um, if my stupid mouse wheel wasn't such a terrible terrible piece of crap. Uh, this would go a lot faster. Um, but basically, you can get quite close here. Now, this is the pre-battle stuff where I have to actually initiate, um, you know, set up my forces, etc. But all of these guys are already out here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just get the battle started. So as you can see here, we basically get a real good look here at what these units look like. Now, this looks like just a block. At first, I thought it was some sort of castle keep. But what it really is, is it's a bunch of men standing on a line with a bunch of pikes in the center. These are our pikemen, and really the backbone of any army in the Thirty Years' War. So as you can see, we are starting off the turn here as the French. I believe this particular turn is, yes, it is our turn. Now, you have the ability to, of course, move up two spaces with these pike shot units. Um, these guys, you can see right here the different things on the lower left corner that they excel at. Um, we can see that they have impact with a musket of 66%, impact with a pipe of 34%, um, mixed foot, which means that there's some musket men in there as well as some pike men. So we really don't know what we're getting once we go up for an attack. We'll go ahead and continue here. And really, just setting up these battles can take quite a while. Now, the first move, obviously, um, is means a lot in games like this. And this really is very similar to the miniature war game scenario. You can see here, I've got some veteran horsemen. And we are going to try to bring them over here through the forest, actually, to try to take on the enemy. Now, we do have some enemy units here. Should give me a good, a good attempt at showing you guys what happens when you come in contact. So we're going to go ahead here. Surprised the enemy units did not fire at us. That's unless those are mine. Oh, those are my units. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. My commanded shot. Um, so we can probably use these guys to sort of try to ambush the enemy. And we're gonna go ahead and send one of them over here. <clears throat> positioning is also very <clears throat> excuse me. Positioning is also very important in this game. Um, basically, when you are in battle, let's say this unit right here is mine. Um, and the enemy unit, this here to the right of Hussars is mine. And the one to the left here is an enemy unit of Hussars. If I'm not facing them during an attack or during the end of a turn or an assault phase, I can't attack. I need to turn to face them, wait for the next turn, and then attack. Um, now, of course, in a, in a usual game, I would go ahead and start moving all of these guys forward. But I think you guys got the general idea of movement here. Now, of course, you do have artillery units, which you can go ahead and open up fire on the enemy. In this case, we dealt zero damage. But let's go ahead and just end the turn. We'll let the enemy go ahead and start. Now there's a residual shooting phase. What this means is that if you are in range of any enemy units with your musket men or they're in range of you, then they will automatically fire at the closest unit to you. I think this is great because it really relives the experience of having a line battle in this time. This was right during the age of, musket, of muskets coming into battle. And so pikes were still very, very, very big deal. Um, close combat was a huge deal. Um, and of course, the melee phase, if any units are engaged in combat, this is when they will actually fight the melee combat. Um, it is the Spanish turn. We're going to see them start to move up here. 
Um, and you can see the enemy moving up just kind of like how we are. We're all trying to meet in the center of the battlefield. But since this is kind of a first look, I'm not exactly going to get engaged in a proper battle. And to be quite honest, if I was in a proper battle, I would have a line prepared for these guys. Um, now, this being open ground, we have no cover. Cover does play a huge part, a huge role in this game. In fact, I won against an army of Protestants, which greatly outnumbered me just by being in cover behind a bunch of bushes, rocks, etc., um, which allowed my men to go ahead and fire off a bunch of volleys without taking any damage in return. Um, so right now we are being very risky standing here on open ground, but it's just a really an excuse to show you guys the combat system of the game um, as, as it is. Now here we go, residual shooting phase. Our cannons are going to shoot, but currently we don't have any units close enough to engage in battle. Um, so we're going to go ahead and keep moving these guys up. And this is really how you want to play the game. Now the point of the game, unlike a lot of other war games, is not to destroy the whole enemy army. As you guys can see, just looking at this, that looks near impossible. Really the point of the game is just to try to make a 40% of the enemy army route. And you do that by basically attacking a certain unit, um, hitting it by hitting it from the flanks, um, getting a bunch of fire on it, in other words, concentrated fire from a number of different units on it, taking it out and forcing it to retreat and flee. And that will happen. First, what will happen is the unit will become fragmented, um, or sorry, displaced, which means that the men are a bit uneasy. They're not in formation anymore. They're sort of, they don't know what they're doing. After that, the unit will become, um, uh, what's it called? Oh, what is the word? Fragmented. Um, when it becomes fragmented, it's really just on the brink of uh, breaking uh, breaking apart because the men are basically uh, terrified and they don't know what to do. And after fragmented, of course, comes broken. And when the enemy unit breaks, they rout. Now, this is one weird thing about the game that can actually sort of be a bit of a problem is your men will run, to run after them. Um, no matter what you say, your men will chase them. And I think that really brings back... Um, part of this particular form of war, where there were obviously no radios, no forms of communication besides flags and banners and things like that, um, you know, it was not unlikely for units to be so enraged at the enemy to just keep attacking even without general's orders, and that happens in this game. Sometimes it works out for the best, and you end up charging right into the flanks of the enemy units as you attack the fleeing unit. Sometimes it works out really badly, and you get stuck in a wall of, uh, of concentrated musket fire and are utterly annihilated. Um, so both can happen in this game. I'm hoping here we can see some of the residual shooting phase. There we go. Yes. Awesome. So our men are actually taking a lot of hits. 21. Uh, the melee phase, there's no units in melee, but I'm hoping that the enemy will move forward and allow us to go ahead and open up here. You can see they're actually shooting at us. We're firing back. 16 men down, 14 men on our side. Oh, the battle is getting started. And we are not even in close combat. This is just the firing phase. There's a lot more to go after this. Um, and one other thing that I'm going to show you about this particular uh, game that I love, to me, is a necessity in a strategy game. I'm going to show you after um, this little conflict here. Um, it really adds to the game for me. Because the thing for me is, when I'm playing a strategy game, especially a game set in a time period like this, I don't just want to see casualties as, you know, squads or for me, or, you know, um, battalions. I want to see casualties as, like, individual men. I want to see how many men were captured, how many men were killed, how many men were wounded. And in this game, it gives you all of that information. So you know how many of the enemy you killed, how many of your own men you've lost to surrender, etc. Um, it really puts the game into perspective. It helps you get, I guess, more involved with the actual content of the game. Um, so we're going to go ahead here. Residual shooting phase. Here my men will open up. Beautiful. So will theirs. And there we go. As you can see, guys, we have a disrupted unit here. I had him way too far ahead of here of the rest of the units. And, of course, everybody concentrated fire on him. And very soon, he might run. Okay, melee phase. No units in melee, so we don't have to worry. Go ahead here and just open up on these guys to show you what to expect. Now, real quickly here, since I'm coming to the end of this Let's Play anyway, or this first look anyway, I should say, um, if you move up here, you'll notice that the enemy will react to my movement. So if I'm moving up forward, the enemy does have a chance to fire a volley to try to stop me. Once I move up again, I still am not able to attack. Um, and this is because not only am I out of movement turns, um, but I need to be turned towards the enemy, and it needs to be the start of my turn to go ahead and lead a charge. So we're going to go ahead and open up with just a musket fire. And we'll do the same with this unit. Move up, open up with our muskets. There we go, down to 17. And this is really how the game continues. Now, we have not gotten into any actual cavalry combat. I may be able to show you guys um, a charge. Yes, and we've got winged hustlers here. These guys are rough. I don't like fighting these guys, but we're going to try to charge. 
Um, and as you can see, the unit being charged is attempting to evade. So in this case, a unit does have a chance to run when you charge, and that's exactly what these guys are doing. Um, now, if we catch them while they're evading, we could do a lot of damage. If we don't, though, they may just be dragging us into a, uh, a t devastating charge with the rest of their cavalry uh, to basically finish us off. So anyway, guys, I'm going to show you now the part of the game that I really enjoy. I mean, besides just the actual time period and the gameplay itself, which I think is phenomenal uh, for strategy fans, um, one of the parts of the game that I really enjoy... Wait, I must shoot off one more volley. All right, not yet. Um, is once you actually escape here... So let's say we exit the battle and we concede. This is what I love. Um, you obviously are told whether or not you won or lost the battle. But once you proceed past that, you can see <clears throat> the casualty counts for each side. Now, since we just only fought very short turn there. Um, you could see how many men died. Uh, we actually, they actually killed 18 of ours. Um, we lost, f well, actually, sorry, 43 of ours. We killed 18 of theirs. They have 37 men wounded, etc. And this really comes in handy, especially when you get into the larger battles. Um, so we're going to go ahead and proceed there. Now, really, just to finish up this particular, um, first look video, I'm going to go ahead and head back here and show you guys the multiplayer, which I think is phenomenal in this particular game. We go ahead and select here. Now, it's going to appear that there's no one here. Now, right now, I do have my turn going on here with another player, which is kind of cool, Anders2009. Um, but if you take a look over here um, at my challenges, you could set up a new challenge uh, of any of these battles, any of the battles you fought in the game. Um, let's say we take Marston Moore here, for instance, and you could choose either side, the Royalists, the Parliamentarians, same with the Italian Words, the Italians or the French or the Catholics or the Protestants. Um, we're going to go ahead and go back. And um, you can also accept challenges. You can see this guy right now, he's probably got a challenge set up for his friend. Now, I have found in my experience that creating challenges is much better, and they're accepted almost within minutes. Um, people are ready to play almost right away. I was concerned looking at first. I was like, is nobody playing this game? But trust me, they are. The game also hosts an amazing editor here, a scenario editor, which allows you to basically go in and create any kind of campaign you really want um, and as long as you have the patience for it you can do it not only that but to, to top it all off as if this wasn't great enough already um, there is something that they've just implemented and this game just came out so obviously there's going to be some or quite a lot to to add to it um, but they've implemented the ability to download maps from other players uh, so other players can create new maps new battles etc and we can download them, play with them, etc. So anyway, guys, that is a first look at Pike and Shot, a new game by Slytherin LTD. Um, I think it's great. I'd love to hear your guys' response down below, your comments, your thoughts. Would you like to see a series on this? Because I'd love to do one. Um, thank you, guys, and have an awesome day.